there's a pretty good reason that swimming is first in a triathlon and running is last. How could they not make sure that an elite athlete, 28 years of age, a guy who's one of the best athletes in the entire world, how could they have made this error? Coach Greg, in today's video, tragedy at the CrossFit Games. An athlete competitor drowned while trying to complete the swimming portion of a CrossFit event. And so Lazar, he was only 28 years of age, competing in the CrossFit Games. This, a superb athlete. And so you have to be thinking, how could this guy drown during an event? What exactly took place? What happened? And so let's get right into it. I would have wanted to highlight some of the best athletes in the world. Uh, but unfortunately, that's just not the case. One of the athletes has unfortunately passed away due to completely avoidable circumstances. And so the fact that this guy could drown in an actual competition just several meters from the shore, this is not out in the open water. They're not swimming 10 miles and the guy got lost. This is a supervised competition with trained lifeguards. The one thing I will say about Lazar before I talk about the incident itself, I distinctly remember him virtually always smiling, even around competition even in relatively stressful times. I've never met this person before. Mitchell Hooper has. He said he was a happy guy, always smiling, enjoying competitions. But I can't imagine somebody drowning at an event like this. And so you may or may not realize this, but I competed in triathlons for approximately 13 years. And when I entered my first triathlon competition at 13, I could hardly even call myself a swimmer. I swam around with my friends. And when I did that first triathlon, and I came in last in the water by several minutes, I'm talking about five minutes behind the second worst swimmer in the field, I remember feeling a sense of panic. It's foggy, I'm swimming, I'm having a rough time. But there was a lifeguard behind me the entire time, literally saying, do you need help? Do you want me to help you get to the shore? I yell back, no, I got it. I can do it. They followed me. They made sure that there was no way that I was going to drown. And so until I got to the shore, barely walking, completely exhausted, the lifeguard was there to save me. And so you're thinking, well, if they could make sure that a 13-year-old kid could be safe, how could they not make sure that an elite athlete, 28 years of age, a guy who's one of the best athletes in the entire world, how could they have made this error? Swimming is one of the least competent things that CrossFit athletes do. Uh, and so getting them to run three and a half kilometers before getting into the water was posing a risk in and of itself. And now another thing you may not realize is that I was a competitive cyclist and I'm actually racing right now, racing bikes. I also have a heated pool and I can say, for example, yesterday I did a race about an hour and a half racing on my bike and I'm sweating. I lost perhaps five or six pounds during that bike race. This event, the CrossFit Games, it took place in a very hot environment, perhaps a hundred degrees. Remember, that is very hot. And so what do you think the athletes are doing? They're sweating. They're losing their electrolytes. And so imagine to their surprise that they in fact have to run before the swim. I in never in my life have done a triathlon where we swam after the run. When you start running, especially in a hot environment, you're going to sweat out so much water you can't believe it. And with that water comes the sweat, and so you have an electrolyte imbalance. And so imagine then having to go into the water. I'm in my pool, and every time I go in my pool after bike racing, I get horrendous cramps in my calves, my hamstrings, my feet, everything. And I'm thinking to myself, if I were in the lake behind my house right now, I would drown. I wouldn't be able to do it. And so imagine telling these guys you're going to run three and a half miles in this extreme heat with the temperature 87 degrees Fahrenheit. And so what do you think is going to happen when these athletes who are sweating profusely start racing as fast as they can to try and win a competition? Do not think many of them are going to cramp up. And if we think about the compounding factors of what might cause heat exhaustion, dehydration, cramping, etc., they're starting to, to really pile up. If you perhaps have never had cramps to this extent while swimming in the water, you have no idea what I'm talking about. But let me tell you, it is something you pray never happens to you. Uh, Lazar started struggling and 
The reason that I know that is because there's a very clear live stream footage of exactly what was happening. And he was trying to stay above the water. And so imagine this, the guy's now 50 meters from shore. The lifeguards are present. They could literally see him if they were looking. The guy starts struggling. Perhaps he's getting a cramp, a severe one. And perhaps he's giving a heat stroke. After all, it is a very, very hot day. Remember, with a heat stroke, many things can happen. You could get confused. You're tired. You don't know what you're doing. Not to mention, sometimes athletes, and I'm not saying that happened in this case, sometimes athletes can get a heart attack while exercising. We've seen it happen before. And so imagine this kind of event happening while you're swimming. And so the lifeguards, they have to be on point. And yeah, we get it. It's an exciting event. You're trying to look at the winners, trying to see who's going to win the competition. But it's your job to do your job, which is to save the competitors. So he goes under the water. A spectator jumps into the water. The spectator jumps in and the lifeguard immediately tells them to turn back to shore. And so imagine... A guy swims in the water saying, what's going on? We need to save this guy. And the lifeguards are, hey, 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 you know, hold on. Every single athlete was finished and his partner and his brother, who is also a competitor, uh, along with other competitors are thinking, where, where is he? And at the end of the race, people are like, where's Lazar? Where is he? We need to go save him. There's a pretty good reason that swimming is first in a triathlon and running is last. Exactly. The swim needs to be done first. I mean, this is ridiculous to think that you have to swim at the end of the run. Have you not all gone out and exercised and gotten a cramp before after running? Or perhaps when you're a kid, they said, don't eat within two hours of swimming, you get a cramp. Why do you think there are lifeguards at parks, beaches, and so on? It's because accidents can and will happen every single year. Frankly, it's, it's tragic because of actions that were taken that were entirely unavoidable. And so you're thinking, well, why didn't the athletes just refuse? I mean, you can't put it into the athletes. You tell an athlete to do something, they're gonna do it. But when the athlete is told to swim in a race, they're assuming there's gonna be a lifeguard there in case something happens. Because if you can't run, you stop. If you can't swim, you die. A hundred percent this is the case. You can't be swimming after running. Anyone gets a cramp, a stitch on the side, they get tired and you start walking and it's fine. And how many times have you seen guys, for example, doing the marathon or the Ironman and you see them at the end of the race, you see them literally crawling to the end of the finish line or having their brother come and help them and cross the finish line, giving up their first place. Remember those brothers did that recently? You start zigzagging, you don't know where you are, but guess what? You could fall down, somebody can carry you across the line, you're not gonna die. But if you're swimming and this happens, what are you gonna do? You're thinking, no, he's an athlete. He could have just thread water with one arm and swam to the side. It's, it's not a big deal, it must be his fault. It's not his fault. When you're pushing yourself to exhaustion in very humid environments, you can't expect that this isn't gonna happen. It's not a if it's gonna happen, it's when and how many. I hope that this starts to inspire some people who are competition organizers, whether it's strongman, CrossFit, bodybuilding, the safety of the athletes has to be paramount. And so speaking of other sports that are dangerous, let's talk about bodybuilding. There was a guy 26 years of age, he died of a heart attack following a competition. Does that shock anyone? Can you imagine something more dangerous than bodybuilding? Literally, the athletes are getting down to five or fewer percentage points of body fat, and they're using diuretics to get even more shredded. Performance enhancing drugs, steroids, growth hormone, insulin, and so on, coupled with the diuretics used to achieve single digit body fat, if not three or 4% body fat, while starving yourself and posing as hard as you can on stage, under those bright lights, what do you think is gonna happen? Nearly every single athlete who sets foot on a bodybuilding stage is close to death. You're literally starving yourself for months, getting excessively lean, not drinking water, and then standing out and performing. How is that healthy? How could that be healthy? And so how do we make it safer? Well, I'll tell you one thing they could do. They could drug test, but no, no one wants that. Why would we listen to Coach Greg? We want to see the freaks who have three or 4% body fat. And so what do the athletes do? Well, of course, they're going to do what they need to do. 
whatever it takes to win. And so if there's no drug testing whatsoever, what do you think the athletes are expected to do? There's no drug testing. Do you think you should compete natural? Oh, just drink as much water as you want. Just don't diet to that extent. Just compete natural. Sure, if you don't want to win, that's fine. But many people, they want to win. And so what could be a possible solution? Well, let's drug test. Let's drug test at the Mr. Olympia. Oh, wait, they tried that. People didn't like it. Athletes weren't quite as shredded. Some were failing the drug test. They have to cover it up and so on. And so I don't know what the solution is, but I do know what the solution is in CrossFit. You don't swim. Why do they need to swim? And if you are swimming, could we not swim in a pool where the lifeguards can see everything that's going on? And if we are swimming in a lake, let's start with that event. At the very least, begin with the swim. And yeah, there are inherent dangers with any sport. If you put them on bicycles, they could, of course, go out and ride the bike, get hit by a car. They could crash, hit their heads and so on. And that could end in tragedy. But this with lifeguards present and the fact that everyone should know you don't put swimming after an event like running. It shouldn't have happened. And so to close out the video, such a sad tragedy. It shouldn't have happened. Hopefully everyone is more cautious than last time. Subscribe, click the bell button, comment to boost the algorithm. Please watch one of the two bloops. And until next time, I am out.